Hi folks, welcome to my session regex for rock stars. My name is Thomas Rayner. I'm a Microsoft employee, uh, not on the PowerShell team. I work on a different team. I'm uh, also available online at Twitter, at Mr. Thomas Rayner. I've got a blog, thomasrayner.ca. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure you join the PowerShell Discord and Slack. Uh, there's some links there for you, aka.ms slash psdiscord and psslack. Uh, if you're looking for help with PowerShell, uh, that's the best place to get it, in my opinion. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, so uh, let's get talking about regular expressions. So the title of this one is Regex for Rockstars, which implies the existence of a Regex for noobs. And so here's a quick recap, if you didn't catch that session. Uh, and it was a session. I did that for the... Um, Research Triangle PowerShell Users Group. You can find that on YouTube if you want something a little bit less uh, rock starry. If you're a little bit more newbie, we're going to cover the same material. We're just going to do it uh, more quickly. So this assumes a little bit of regex knowledge, um, but if you don't have it, that's okay. You're just hanging there. You'll be just fine. For accordingly, with our uh, recap for noobs, what is regex? What's a regular expression? regex is short for regular expression is at its basic depth it's a sequence of characters that defines a search pattern regular expression is that search pattern so what does that mean we can use it to find or replace items that are in strings so we're talking about string manipulation largely it's good for things like getting text out of files like log files and things like that uh, validating user input and just any other type of string manipulation or string scanning that you might want to do. Uh, regular expressions are a game changer when it comes to that. And you need to add this tool to your toolbox if you want to be a successful uh, dev of any kind. And guess what? You're already doing it. You're writing regular expressions already, and I'll prove it to you. Here's an example of something that you've probably done before where you've just got an array of strings and then you're doing this where objects thing where the object matches the string something. Well, guess what? This is regex. I mean, this returns something one and something two. If you've uh, done almost any PowerShell, this was probably pretty apparent to you. But this green part uh, in the second line, that's a regular expression. And where it appears in those other uh, strings on the first line, that's where that regular expression is being found. Let me grab my laser pointer. This is the regular expression, and then this is where it's found in, uh, in those other strings. So you're already doing it. You can do Boolean matching as well. So like the PowerShell has this match operator. Uh, this returns true because the regular expression this is a regular expression, is found in the string on the right, or sorry, on the left. So the match operator takes a string to examine on the left and a regular expression uh, on the right to look for in that string. You're doing this already. This is, you're a regex expert already. You're here ready for the rock stars. Uh, and if, similarly, if you have something like this, well, that returns false because the regular expression pickles isn't found in the string that you gave it this sequence of characters was searched for and not found in the uh, supplied text. So match says false. Your regular expression didn't match anything in that string. Uh, you can do simple replacements. Again, like PowerShell, this is a built-in operator uh, called replace. And you have here a simple string and then it's replacing something with something else. Here's the output. Everybody who's uh, dabbled in PowerShell knows what this, uh, what this operator does. It gives you the modified output. It modifies that string. And so in this instance, replace takes uh, three arguments. It takes the string that you're examining, and then on the uh, right side, it takes a regular expression, and then a comma separates the regular expression from the value that you're going to replace it with if it's found. And so this regular expression is found in this string and then it's replaced with that argument here which gives you the result. Again, relatively straightforward uh, and not exactly rock star level but hang in there, we're getting there. Uh, we're still in the recap for noobs. This is material that's covered in that other session so we're going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, quantifiers. Uh, this is where we start getting into special characters and 
the regular expressions start looking like things that aren't just strings of text. Uh, here's an example of the star character in uh, regex. Uh, quantifiers apply to the character that precedes them immediate, uh, that comes immediately before them. So in this case, we have match again, we have our sample text, and then the pattern we're matching the, uh, reads this way. S, the literal character S, and then the star applies to what comes immediately before it. And the star says zero or more of whatever comes before it. And then the literal character is O-M-E to the rest of the string, right? Uh, and so this returns true. You go, well, how can that be? Well, because this S is found zero or more times, and then the rest of the string is there. So that uh, doesn't just work like a wild card. Like if you've been using Windows Explorer to search for files, uh, that star character can be like a wild card. If you're using the like operator instead of match, then the star character works like a wild card. And that's not what we're doing here. In regex, that star has a very particular meaning to quantify the character or pattern that comes right before it. And um, in this case, the star means zero or more of whatever that character is. Uh, and so you can see this here, it kind of breaks down this way. That purple section um, is, I added a space here just so you can see it, right there. There's zero or more S's right there. And then the rest of the string is found. So that pattern is found. That's the whole match. The entire pattern on the right, the whole match on the left is found right there. Uh, here's another one, the plus sign means one or more of something. So this one returns false, right? Because instead of zero or more, we want one or more. Otherwise, we're doing an identical uh, type of search. We're going, we need one or more S and then the rest of the string. And we didn't find that because there's no S's there, right? You can't have one or more of something that there's none of. And then the question mark uh, is sort of like a combination of the two. It just means zero or one. And in this instance, it's functionally the same as the star, but when you actually start getting into matching strings, it can be a little bit different. And you found one or zero S, and then the rest of it works, right? So you found that uh, regular expression pattern in that string that we're providing. If you need more in-depth on this, find that regex for noob session, because we spend a lot more time uh, talking about the, the beginner concepts. Start talking about special symbols. This is also covered in the uh, noob session. Um, here's a quick refresher. I'm not going to go through each of these individually, uh, but I will touch on the fact that as we start looking through these, you can see a lot of these uh, special characters are a backslash and then something, backslash and then something, backslash and then a, all these different letters. In regex, the backslash is a special, special character. It's more than just a regular um, character with different meaning. It is your magic wand that you use to tap whatever character comes after it to either give it special meaning or take special meaning away. And you'll see what we mean in a couple of examples, but in this situation, like instead of just being a literal lowercase w, backslash lowercase w means any word character, which is a letter, number, score, underscore. Um, backslash uppercase W means any non-word character. We'll touch a couple of examples here, but we won't dwell on it too long. Uh, this is a concept called escaping, where you're um, either taking away a uh, special meaning of a character that's escaping, or you're giving special meaning to an otherwise benign character like a W or a B. You can see here this period, this one's hard to see, this period represents any single character. So if you wanted a literal period, you'd have to take that special meaning away from the period. And you'd do that with a backslash. Let's uh, let's just do some quick examples. Speaking of the period, this one returns true. Well, that's confusing uh, because here's how it works. You have the literal characters, S-O-M-E in here, and this purple section is found right there. And then this dot, we just said that dot represents literally any character, which comes right after that. And then the rest of this blue thing here is just H-I-N-G, that's the literal characters. So this returns true because this pattern is found in that string. So you can see how uh, if we wanted to match an actual period instead of any character, we'd have to do something different there. Here's another one. Uh, this one returns true. Well, this 
in this case doesn't look anything like the input. And these other examples, the regex that we're looking for, looks a lot like the thing that we're searching in. But here, this lowercase d is would normally just be a d, but with this backslash, turns that into the regular expression for a single digit. And we find that. And not only that, we find one, we find two, we find three matches. There's actually three matches in here because we found a single digit three times. Uh, similarly, you see this pattern a lot where the uppercase D, or so the uppercase uh, version of the same letter is the inverse. So this is matching digits. This is matching anything that's not a digit. And so since this string is all digits, we don't find that pattern there. Uh, here's another one, word characters, those are numbers, letters, uh, and underscores, this returns true. We found uh, a whole bunch of matches in there. Uh, the caret symbol, the um, uh, you might think of it like it's an up arrow symbol, on a lot of keyboards it's like shift six, represents the start of a string, and the dollar sign represents the end of a string. And in this case, we've got the beginning of a string, the letters hi, and then the end of the string. And we found that pattern there. Slashes uh, can also be used as a magic wand against themselves. So if you look at this uh, example, you might look at that and go, why is that false? We've got uh, the pattern we're looking for is backslash S-L-A-S-H, backslash slash. And I can see that right here. There's a backslash and then there's these letters. Why is that false? Well, think about how this uh, regular expression is calculated. What this is saying is I want a backslash S, which in, regular, uh, in a regex is this backslash is manipulating that S and turning that into the symbol for a space character, for white space, and then L-A-S-H. And I got this blue part here, but I don't have any white space coming before it. So, and this isn't how regex parses the actual string. This is just kind of a human readable way. I don't have that. I have an S, not a space. So this is false. And so I don't find that pattern. But if I do this, I can use the backslash to give the next character special meaning or take that special meaning away. And so I can do an escape here. I can escape that backslash and turn it into a literal character and then give the rest of my string and I find it right there. Let's keep going, rock stars. So that's your kind of quick refresher. There's more than just these as well. Um, and there's lots of documentation on uh, what they all are. Some languages have different implementations as well, um, but Generally speaking, you'll you'll run into some pretty normal and consistent examples. Uh, brackets. We're going to talk more about brackets after, but here's the quick refresher again. Um, curly braces, curly brackets, are like a custom quantifier. In this example, uh, this returns true, and the backslash D is a digit, and then in the curly braces, I'm saying I want three of what comes right before it. Remember quantifiers apply to whatever is directly before them and in this case it's a D and I've got one, two, three digits in a row. So I found my pattern right there. Um, I've got another quantifier here but we're gonna talk about the round braces. This one returns true as well. The round braces create a group. We're gonna talk lots about grouping in a second here. Um, but in this situation I've got a quantifier and it applies to whatever's in this group. It treats this entire thing like one entity. And so I've got hello one, two, three, and then I've got another hello one, two, three. What this regular expression is saying is I want this hello one, two, three to be treated like a group, and then I want two of that group. So I found that right there. Uh, and then the square brackets represent a set. So a, like an array or a collection in, uh, in different languages. And this is saying, uh, this returns true. Let's break this down. I've got the end of the string, just working backwards here. So I've got the end of the string. And then in this set, I'm saying I want either F or G or H. And so my string does end in G. So I've got a G and then the end of the line. Does that make sense? So I've got my square brackets here representing a set of possibles. And I've found that right there. So that whole pattern matches that one character. Uh, so let's talk about the regex class itself in PowerShell. Uh, if you're writing C Sharp, you can use this as well or any other .NET language, but we're gonna we're still looking at PowerShell examples. Uh, you can get, do better than just Boolean matching. A lot of what we've been doing other than the replace operator has been um, 
just saying, is this string here or not? But what if we wanted to actually get a value out of this or a richer object? In this situation, I'm using the matches uh, method on the regex class, and it takes a couple arguments. It takes the string that I have here, just the raw string, and then a comma, and then the uh, regular expression that I'm looking for. And this returns uh, not just this text, but it's an actual regular expression match object, if I remember correctly. And so what I've got here is backslash W, which is word characters and a quantifier. So one or more word characters and then the end of the line. And you can see here, uh, that's how that breaks down. And part of the regular expression match object uh, that gets returned is the actual value that's returned. So here, I don't have any idea what the actual string here is. I just know that it's going to be word characters, as many of them as I find, and then the end of the line. So here's a slash. It's not a word character, but here is a bunch of word characters in the end of the line. So that's what my value is. And there's a bunch of other information that comes out of a match operation that we'll talk about too. Uh, if I want to isolate that, obviously I just use dot value to take that property. And now I can just search my strings for the values that I want to get out of them, whatever pattern they might be matching. There's a lot more methods in the regex class. There's replace, there's escape, uh, there's an individual match, not matches, that you can use as well. They all do different things and you should check them out in more detail. Uh, it's super flexible. Any kind of regular expression manipulation you want to do is probably going to be in that class. So that's the recap for noobs. Let's talk about some rock star stuff now. We're going to slow it down just a bit here because now we're not recapping. All right, so firstly, let's parse some HTML. Just kidding. Um, regex is powerful, but part of being a regex rock star is knowing when you should find another tool. Uh, it's not. It's very powerful, but it's not the perfect thing for everything. If you find yourself parsing HTML with a regular expression, you messed up somewhere. And you should revisit that. But in general, uh, like if your data isn't very uniform, then you might have trouble with a regular expression. Um, you'll learn through experience when you should and shouldn't use a regular expression. They're a super flexible tool, and I don't think enough people uh, take advantage of them. But uh, it, it's not the only tool in your toolbox. Let's talk about grouping. I told you we were going to come back to round brackets, and here we are. Uh, so grouping is uh, something like this. Let's take a look. I've got my regex match here again, and my string is just bond, James Bond. And the pattern I'm looking for is James, and then a space, and then bond. And you can already tell by looking at this, this regular expression is found right there. And I get this uh, regular expression match object out of it. And I get this value. Now what if I wanted to do something a little more significant. So now I'm starting to introduce some variables. I've got a dollar PAT for pattern, and a dollar MAT for match. And I've got a much more complicated regular expression than I had, but we're gonna break it down and you're gonna see how it's actually very similar. So I'm actually, I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I've got bond, James bond, and then I've just filled in this uh, dollar PAT variable instead of putting the raw string in there so I can use vertical space instead of horizontal. You can still see, like I've got James and Bond and it appears like you would. You can kind of work your way back from there. I've got my space and I've got a bunch of stuff in round brackets and question marks and, cur and angle brackets. So what's going on here? These round brackets denote groups, right? So it says anything within these round brackets, I'm treating as a group. I'm treating as an individual entity for some kind of purpose. And then uh, you could use that with a quantifier to say I want several instances of this group, but groups have special characteristics that you can take advantage of. You, uh, most commonly when the first character inside the group is a question mark, some other syntax is going to come after that that tells you or that tells the regular expression engine a unique thing that you're about to do and you want to pass some instructions for how to handle the rest of this group. In this case, we have a question mark and then uh, angle brackets with an arbitrary string inside of them because we're naming these groups. I'm saying here, this literally says, I have a group named first and the value of that group is going to be James and I have a space. And then I have another group whose name, the name of this group is last. 
is the value uh, within these angle brackets. Sorry. So the name of this first group is first. The name of this other group is last. And so what does that actually get us? Well, first, we found our pattern because we found a group that matches this value and a space and then a group that matches that value right there. So the regular expression is still found. But now we have something a little different. We have this first and last group. And so our group, or sorry, our match object doesn't just contain one group anymore. It contains several groups. It contains this zero group, which is the entire match. It's sort of a default regex thing. And then it contains a group called first and a group called last. And as you can imagine, we can uh, expand that a little bit more. If we look inside the, the groups property of that returned object, we get these three different things. I had to organize them a little weird to put them on this slide, but normally this would just come out in one big list on your uh, console. And so I have a, a group that has just everything. Then I have a group whose name is first and a group whose name is last. And you can see the captures that are inside of that. And now you can start working with them. So I've got the same uh, pattern and match. And now if I do uh, matches.groups and then I isolate the one named first, I can look at the value from that. And I can just look at the um, part of that match that came out there. So if I'm starting to build usernames out of proper names or something like that, uh, you can see how this starts to kind of compile itself. I can isolate just the value from that. So if I've got this entire regular expression that's isolating the first name and then the last name and then I found that and I know that whatever the first name is is going to be here, I can just get the value right out of that and get the word James. And so if this wasn't just the letters J-A-M-E-S, it could be anything. It could be a different regular expression. It could be something that comes after a period in a space and then it's a series of uh, letters, right? You can kind of see how this starts to build upon itself. Uh, and so you can use this with the match operator as well. So you see I'm not using the regex class, I'm using dash match. I have my string on the left and I've got my pattern, my regex on the right. It just returns true, but you'll remember in PowerShell you get this dollar matches variable. Uh, by default when you use the match operator and it has my different groups. It's got group zero, which is the entire match. It's got my first and last uh, group as well, um, identified there by their name, in case you missed it. So if I want to start uh, working with my um, last group, I can also just do this where I go matches dot last. Again, here I'm using the match operator and I'm using null equals to suppress the Boolean output. Um, and I get this matches variable for free, just automatically. If I go matches.last, I'm isolating that last group, the one named last, and I get my value out of there. Very flexible, very robust. Uh, lots you can do with grouping. Uh, like the slide says, you, we're going to talk about a few more of them right now, but named groups are super popular and super flexible, and you definitely want to take a look at them, uh, especially as you're, like, the most relatable example I can think of is like an onboarding script where you have a, a, a regular, like a legal name, like a first name, middle name, last name, and you have to build a, uh, a username out of it or something, or you have to build an email address or something. Um, you can identify those all much more cleanly instead of splitting it on a space and using the first part and the middle part or something. Trust me, named groups will uh, make your scripts way cleaner. Let's talk about lookaheads now. Let's keep moving right along, rock stars. What the heck's a lookahead? We should probably talk about that first, right? Everything, so let's just talk about what we've looked at so far. Everything we do matches a character and then the character is part of the value that gets returned, right? Like we matched the letter in the last example, the word James was made up of those letters and those letters were all part of the regular expression, except for when we're looking at the start and end of a string. And so look aheads and look behinds are gonna be a little bit more like that where we're matching space between characters. Because what happens when there's part of a uh, string that you want to include in the match but you don't want that actual character to be returned. Most people would just include it as part of their regular expression and then trim it um, off later or replace it with null, but there's a more elegant solution. 
something like this. For example, you have a string that's just domain backslash username and you want domain. There's a lot of ways you could do this. This is a pretty easy example. Um, you could do things like this where you have the start of the string and then word characters and then more of them. Remember word characters are uh, letters, uh, numbers and underscores. So you could have the start of the string, letters and more of them and then hey you got to a slash so it's just domain. You could do this where it's just any character that's not a backslash. Remember caret negates a set when it's inside of square brackets. So this is uh, the start of the string, not a slash and zero or more of them. Uh, you could do a named group like this where you have uh, everything separated into here's a group named dom for domain and its word characters and then any other character and then isolate the username. Or for the purposes of this illustration, you could use a look ahead. In this scenario, we're looking for a word character, which we found a letter. We're looking for one or more of them. And then we've got a group that comes next after our word characters and look inside we've got this question mark equals I told you question mark is going to tell the regular expression engine that I'm treating this group differently I'm doing some unique processing with this group and in this instance when you put an equal sign afterwards it's saying I want to look for in this case a backslash two backslashes is just a regular backslash it's an escaped backslash but because I'm doing this as a look ahead, I have that question mark equals in that group. I don't want that backslash to be part of my match. I want the space that comes between characters before that pattern is matched. So in this scenario, the green part that's highlighted just the word domain is matched. This is saying I want word characters followed by, and I want the thing that comes after this to be a backslash. So I'm not saying I want the backslash, I want what comes after this to be a backslash, but I don't, I'm not actually interested in returning that backslash. So look ahead, you can do things like this where I have a, uh, we're looking at just the uh, domain itself or something formatted like an email address. I've got my word character and I've got more of them. And then I want what comes next Again, I've got my look ahead syntax here. I've got round brackets with a question mark and equals. That tells me that I want what comes next to be this dot and the letters TLD. So I want this to come next and I want this dot to be here and I want this TLD to be here, but I don't actually want it to be part of the value that gets returned. Now I'm just using the match operator, so I'm just getting true out of this. But when I go and look at the match that comes out, this regular expression matches the word domain and that's the value that gets put out. I don't get the dot and the TLD. Even though they're represented here, uh, they're not part of the actual match. So if I had something like this where uh, this is totally different, right? It's user at domain, but instead of dot TLD, it's dot else. I have the exact same regular expression, but this one's false because I still have word characters and what comes next does include a dot, but then I have this TLD and I don't have that at all. Did you hear the cat? <laughs> and like regex looks for all, it looks for the same pattern over and over again. This is a little bit more like how it actually parses where it's going to start at the beginning of my string and it's going to look for word characters. And then what comes after the word characters? Well, this is an at, so that's wrong. And then it's going to look here and it's going to say, oh, I found word characters. What comes next? That dot, but no TLD. It's going to evaluate from here as well and keep looking. It parses through the entire string. It doesn't just magically isolate the part that I want it to isolate. It has to systematically go through the entire thing. So either way, I didn't find that regular expression in the string that I'm looking for it in. Look behinds, very similar concept, slightly different syntax. Instead of looking for the space between characters that follows a uh, express or the rest of a regular expression. I'm looking for the space uh, behind a character. In this case, I've got this word character and uh, one or more of them, and I want the space that comes before it. Like so, I want uh, this look behind. Basically, says uh, this is a group, and what does the group do? It has special processing instructions. 
this uh, left angle brace and this equal sign tells it this is a look behind. I want the space between characters where what comes before it is this user at and then followed by the rest of my expression. I just realized the blue and the purple are mixed up here, but you get the idea. So this user at is matched right here. It's this kind of peachy uh, color. And then I get my D and then the rest of it here is my word, uh, word character. So I found that again, but the actual thing being returned is just the word domain because this is the space between characters where what comes before it is user at which isn't actually a thing, right? You can't return the space between characters. This just says, I want to see these characters, and then I want to see word characters in one or more of them. So I, I'm seeing these characters, but the thing I'm actually interested in is word characters. You can also negate look aheads and look behinds, and there's special syntax for that. So rather than doing a look ahead where something is not, um, let's just show you an example. Uh, here we have uh, an example where we have a couple of different uh, items. This looks like an array, but it's not. This is a single quote and then a string that has a domain username, comma, space, domain um, username, right? So maybe you copied this out of an email. Maybe this is way longer. You could parse this into items and go through them individually, but say, you know, who, who's got time for that? You want to do manual work? You want to just write regular expressions? I want to just write regular expressions all day. Wouldn't that be a dream? So I'm starting to combine concepts now because my pattern, we're going to break it down in a second, is being used in here. So I've got my regular expression class that matches, takes my possible uh, string here. So this is just my raw text that's being evaluated. And then I look for my pattern. And then in the groups, I'm isolating the one that I've named domain. So let's break down my regular expression and see what's going on here. I've got, first things first, I have a named group, which is the name of my group is domain. And you can probably imagine that's the group that I'm looking for. Um, and I can tell that because I've got round brackets and then a question mark. I've got special processing in this group and the angle brackets with the string in them names this group domain. What am I matching there? Well, uh, backslash W is word characters, one or more of them. And by default, like before we talk about the rest of this expression, I got that here, I got that here, I got that here, and I got that here. I've got word characters in a, in a collection in these four different places. Um, but if you're skipping ahead, you can see the value isn't all four of those. So what comes next? I have a backslash, a literal backslash, because I'm escaping it. I'm using the backslash to take away the powers of that other backslash. So I've got that here. Now I've got two possible matches. And then this is a negative look ahead. So like a look ahead matches the space between characters where what comes next is this pattern. Uh, this is matching when what comes next is not the pattern of characters in here. So with an example here, what comes next is not Robin. Well, Batman is not Robin, but Robin is Robin. So this one matches this regular expression. Sorry, this regular expression matches this portion of the uh, string here. Does that make sense? I want my domain word characters and this is what's in the domain group. So when I isolate the domain group, I just get this domain one and then these backslashes and then what comes. So this is part of the match. I have a backslash here. This is part of the match. It's just not part of the domain group. And then what comes next is not Robin. The space between characters where what comes next is not Robin. Again, like you start talking in double negatives, triple negatives, and it gets a little confusing. But uh, as you kind of get used to it, you'll get used to that sort of way of thinking. Uh, and you can see here I isolated that just using uh, the group naming. Let's look at another example here. In my uh, input, just my input string is 10 candies costs $5. I don't know if that's right grammar or not, but it doesn't matter for this. Um, I've got a couple of digits here and let's just break down. Like before I even tell you what the goal of this is, let's just break down this regular expression. First, the value that comes out of it is 10. 
So we can see whatever this is doing matches this part of this entire string. I've isolated that. So let's work backwards. This isn't how the regular expression engine parses it, but this is sort of how you can read it. I have digits and one or more of them. So this is one or more digit and this is one or more digit. So these are my candidates for this match right now. Then I've got a negative look behind, right? So this is a group. It's got a question mark with a um, special character. And what comes next is not, or sorry, sorry, this is a negative look ahead, my bad. Uh, what comes next is not a dollar sign. Oh no, this is a negative look behind, jeez. One take, I'm not recording it. Uh, you guys are getting the raw live look. See, this is how confusing it can be sometimes. These are so terse and uh, in PowerShell, we're used to things being so verbose. They can be challenging to read. I'm gonna show you a trick in a moment that will help you parse these so that you're not just reading them. I wrote these slides and I get confused. It's okay, it's an honest thing that happens um, and uh, you have to just sort of deal with it. But in this context, I've got my digits, one or more of them. I have a negative look behind. This arrow is kind of a clue. It points in the behind direction and it comes before my rest of my string. What comes before is not a literal dollar sign. You remember dollar signs when they're not escaped like this represent the end of the string. So if I want an actual dollar sign represented, I have to bonk it with my magic backslash to take away its special meaning. So this is saying, not a dollar sign, and then I want these characters. So this is a dollar sign, right? This blue part represents here, that's what that's showing. And I want the string of numbers where what comes before them is not a dollar sign. So that one's out, it just leaves me with this, because this is numbers, and the thing that comes before it is, is the beginning of the string. There's no dollar sign before these ones, uh, before these digits, so that's my match. Uh, Non-capturing groups can be really valuable as well. Uh, you can use them in conjunction with a lot of these other things, especially when you're using named groups. This can be helpful for kind of getting rid of matched data that you don't want to continue using afterwards. Let's look at an example. Uh, I've got my input here. It costs dollars, $40 dollars, and then my pattern, and let's look at my groups by default here. I get three groups. I get my default group that has my entire match. I have a group uh, that's named one, which is what you get when you don't actually give a group a name, but you, you create a group. I'll show you with these highlights here. And I have a group that's named price. So this literal dollar sign is right here. And it's in a group. I didn't give this any special instructions with the question mark, so the regex engine just assigns it a name of one. Uh, it helps me keep track. Zero is the entire match. One is my first unnamed group. And then I have a named group called price that matches these digits. And you can see here, this entire regular expression, oh, I thought I had another one there. This entire regular expression is found right there. And it has a unnamed group just named one whose value is the dollar sign. And then I have a named group called price, which is this 40. And so you can see here, if all I'm worried about is the number, I have this extraneous group. Maybe I don't want that. Well, I can get rid of that group by using my question mark again inside of the round brackets to tell it that I have special instructions. And then a colon says this group is non-capturing. I don't need you to capture this group. It still shows here, but what you get out of it is your group zero and then your named group. So the output of this is identical, except I don't have another group here. Because again, I'm isolating the groups out of that uh, regular expression match object. And you can see it breaks down the exact same way. The price named group is right here. The digit is matched accordingly and its value is represented in this group. And this dollar sign is still part of my match, but the group that it's in isn't gonna be returned in this groups object. You can see the value is still dollar sign four zero. It's still part of the overall match, 
but the group that it's in is not part of the groups that are being returned to me because I told it, I don't need that group. I don't want to look at that group. You can keep that group to yourself. Regex101.com, super valuable. Uh, it, you can see here kind of on the left side, there's different flavors of regex. And that can be misleading, especially because you don't necessarily see a .NET flavor there. For most scenarios, regex is going to parse the exact same way, and it doesn't really matter what you use here. But what this does is you can put in your regular expression, and then you can put in a bunch of sample strings, like, hey, I want to test this one. I want to test this, this, and this. And then this scenario, I'm trying a rudimentary attempt at matching an IP address, three digits, a dot, three of that pattern and then three more digits at the end and you can see here how it breaks down it found this one and not that one that's cool there's lots of things that do this and kind of validate your regular expressions but what's special about regex101.com is it breaks down the explanation for you and you can see almost similar to how I had it while we were talking about it in this green is a round bracket then a round bracket and then this quantifier and it says first capturing group Quantifier matches exactly three times. This backslash D one comma three matches a digit equal to one or nine matches between one and three times. Again, I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but you get this full explanation. And so if you're inheriting regular expressions that don't make a lot of sense to you, pop them in here and see how they break down. If there's a lot of nested brackets, it can be confusing a lot of the time and it doesn't really make sense to try to do indentation and stuff on regular expressions. You can use this tool and others like it to help you get those explanations broken out. Apparently I could have used one on that other example that I shared with you. So that's all I have for you. Uh, you are now a regular expression rock star. Thank you very much for uh, joining me on the adventure. I look forward to hearing from you folks about how you are now fully capable and confident when it comes to regular expressions. Uh, reach out to me on Twitter at Mr. Thomas Rayner. Uh, you can find me in the PowerShell Discord and Slack sometimes as well. But I highly recommend digging into this. I know it goes by fast. You might have to watch it again. Uh, there's that for noobs session as well that you can find if it totally went over your head. There's tons of learning resources, but hopefully you have a better idea now of how flexible and robust these are and how many different places you can use them and take advantage of them uh, and how they can really make a difference in your, um, in your PowerShell scripting, take you to the next level and really deliver additional value to the people that you're writing this code for deliver more value to your customers, learn another tool. You can do it. I believe in you and you know how to do it now that you've become a regex rock star. Thanks very much for joining me again. Talk to you later.